Hello. What if we can make a YouTube video where the title of the video updates with the number of views the video has? So it would be something like, this video has X number of views. But I know you're probably thinking, hey, it's been done before, right? Tom Scott, which if you don't know who Tom Scott is, I don't know whether to blame you or not to blame you. Regardless, Tom Scott makes really, really interesting videos. He was actually one of the reasons why I started making YouTube videos, but um, yeah, Tom Scott made a video similar to that. I don't know why I was bidding around the bush. This is probably my most unscripted video ever, but um, he made a video similar to that at the time when I watched it. It had around 12 million views, but it probably has way more now. And the code snippet for that is on there. So you're probably thinking that's simple, right? Probably has some script, goes to YouTube, fetch the number of views, creates a string and then updates the video back update the title of the video back with that you know string it's been done several times you know we can take it one step forward what if the thumbnail also updates with the number of views the video has yeah that's not as simple as it seems their api is where you can generate pictures and you know it'll be something similar to those but has it been done before i don't know i don't know maybe we could be the first or maybe we're just doing something that other people have done. Regardless, I still want to try it. I want to try it. Um, how are we going to do it? I don't know. I honestly don't know, to be honest. I don't know. I don't know. But we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. That's why you're here. That's why you clicked on this video to know how it was done, to probably see the process. And, you know, that's what I'm going to take you through. So, you know, come on. Come on. Come with me. Come. I said, come with me. Come. Come, come with me. You know the hear what come. Come with me. Come. So the first thing I like to do when working on any programming project is to establish the outcome or the use case of the project. After that, I write down the steps to achieve that outcome. These steps end up being smaller problems that need to be solved to get to the larger solution. I essentially break down the problem into smaller problems that are much more easier to solve and are less intimidating. By doing this, I can better estimate how long a project will take and identify any potential blockers, unknowns, or dependencies I might have. I also like to sketch out potential architectural designs and sequence diagrams so I have a plan when it's time to code. Looks good. Looks good. Come. Here's a brain dump of everything I think is going to happen or I think will happen. The first thing we have to do is get the number of views the video has. We'll do this using the YouTube API. So things in green are things that I know we can do. Not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure if other people have done it, then we can do it. Every view has a unique ID attached to it. If you look at the URL for this video, pretty sure you'll see a string there on top. That's what we will use to query it from YouTube. Next, we'll create a title with the number of views the video has. That's simple. We can easily use string manipulation for that. Then we have to generate a thumbnail with the number of views the video has. This is where I'm not 100% sure how to do it. We'll figure it out together. But a few options is to use Banner Beer. They're like an API you can call, you know, you create an account with them and give them the string and then they put it in an image. Or we could do ours. I don't know. Pretty sure there's a Python library out there that we can use to do it. I'm not 100% sure. That's why those are in red because we're not sure. The next thing we need to do is update the video title with the new, with the one that we created here and update the video thumbnail with the generated thumbnail from this step here. So I'm not 100% sure if we can do that either. Maybe, maybe not, we'll see. All of this needs to keep happening in a loop. So these three things, that's why this is here. You know, this needs to run in a schedule or a loop. Maybe that goes every minute, every hour, every, Definitely not every second. I don't think I have the money for, not even the money. Yeah, it's the money. I don't think I have the money to, for whatever cost that'll happen. Now, how do we make this run in a loop? You can set up a Chrome job or you can use something like Make. Um, that's what I have here. I don't know if you see it. Make or Intergomat. It used to be Intergomat. Basically, you can set up something that calls an endpoint every hour, every 10 minutes, however you want it to. So that's why I have Make on here. Below here, you probably can't see that. Um, the first step is we'll have a Python. I think we'll probably do this in Python unless I find another way. Maybe JavaScript, Node.js, I don't know. Probably Python. We'll write a Python script or whatever, our Python file here that goes and gets the number of views from YouTube. YouTube would tell us the video has this number of views. Then the third step is whatever separate Python file or function we have, we'll generate, we'll send a call there to have it generate the thumbnail and generate the title. Then when that file is done generating, it'll send it back to us here. 
and here is where we will send a call to update the thumbnail and the title to YouTube and hopefully YouTube sends us back a 201 or a 200. I'm not sure, it could be one of those. So yeah, that's the whole brain dump. I like to plan things like this before I even write any code. That way I kind of have a, an idea of what I'm going to do step by step by step by step. So hopefully it works. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. I don't know, we'll figure it out. I think the next step is try to figure out some of these, right? What Python library are we going to use or are we going to use Banner Beer to generate the thumbnail and see if we can actually update the video of a thumbnail. The video of a thumbnail, wow. The thumbnail of a video on YouTube by the API. So basically trying to clear out some of these reds so everything is in green before we even start writing one piece of code, so. After doing some research, I think it's possible. It's very possible. So I found a few things that I, that will definitely help. So the first is this directly from the YouTube API where you can fetch the view count of a video. The next is to update a video. So we can update the title of the video. Finally, the one that we weren't sure about is the thumbnail set. So turns out we can upload a custom thumbnail to your YouTube video, to a YouTube video and set it for a video, which is great that there's an API for that. For generating the image, however, the last red flag, I found a few tutorials that shows how to add text on top of image using a library called Pillow. This project is a goal. We can finally start writing code. Let's see. I think this should be, should go pretty smooth. <laughs> Hopefully I don't regret that statement, but yeah. Okay, after what seems to be days of coding, um, apparently it was only a few hours. I think I'm at a great place to stop right now. So we've been able to accomplish the first, I think the first and the third task, which is figuring out how to get the number of views from a channel. This function does that right here. The next thing that I wasn't sure that we could do, well, I knew we could do it, but was updating the video thumbnail, which we can do right here. The method to call it is very similar to what I have here, which you know, this updates the title as well. So, um, you know, just create the YouTube client, pass in the ID of the video you want to update. You want to update only part of the video, so it's a snippet, and you pass in the title. If you want to update the tags and all of that, you can do that here too. So I think we're at a good place to stop for the day at least. I will see you when I see you. All right, it is currently Tuesday, May 9th at around 10.30 p.m. And yeah, I guess we're picking up from where we left off on Sunday, Saturday, I believe. Today, we are going to be taking the thumbnail pictures that you can see, oh, that you saw to click on the video right now. So probably have a voiceover to walk you through my idea, my thought process, what I'm thinking. So yeah, I guess we should just go for it. I've been creating videos for about two and a half years now. When I started, the hardest thing to come up with was the content I wanted to create. There was always a thought that someone or multiple people had already created a video on the topic I wanted to create. Why will people want to watch mine? What is going to make mine different from others? I ended up reading a book called Show Your Work by Austin Kleon. Amongst other things in the book, he talked about how it's hard to come up with unique ideas. In this day and age, people get ideas and inspiration from other people and simply build off them. It's okay to do what others have done, as long as you add your own unique twist to it. 
most of the time that unique twist is you because you are truly unique your take on a topic might be similar to someone else's but your delivery might be what sets your video apart your personality would be what makes your video resonate with some and not others it took me some time to grasp this and once i did it changed everything for me i started putting out more videos and it resonated with a lot of people I get video ideas from things I see at work, questions people ask in the comment sections, random thoughts and more. If someone has already made a video about it, that's fine. My way of conveying the ideas will be different from others. I've been releasing two short form videos to TikTok, YouTube Shorts and Instagram Reels every week for the past four months. I always have a backlog of ideas to create from because that thought is no longer there. Creating a set and the background you see in the videos is actually what takes the most time. I found it to be a creative outlet for me. Choosing the background colors, selecting what to wear, what theme I want to go for, what props to use, how to light the set, and all. It can get overwhelming when your vision isn't translating to what the camera is recording, but it's all good. It's all a learning process and I know I'm definitely getting better with time. All this to say, if you have an idea for a video you want to make, or a book you want to write, or pictures you want to take, basically any creative process, don't let the idea that other people are doing or have done it hinder you from doing it. The fact you're doing it makes whatever you're going to create unique because there is only one you. At the end of the day, people resonate to who you are as much as what you create. That was smooth, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 it was smooth. You caught it, yeah? Yeah, all right. Back to the video, back to the video. After getting the pictures I liked, I threw them into Lightroom, edited them a little bit, then uploaded them to Canva to get some designs. I created some thumbnail templates, downloaded them, then played with the code for a little bit and was able to generate my first image. coding thing is nice though. Huh. Ah. Love it when a good tutorial comes together. <laughs> Yo, this is nice. This is nice. This is nice. Oh, wow. Now this is not bad at all. At all. You know now. You know, all I gotta do is just figure out. Yo, this is nice. I mean I think I'll be wow. I think I'll be done with this project this and edit later. Hmm. Nah, this is nice. This is nice. This is. This is. We like it. We like it. <laughs> I recently installed GitHub Copilot and started using it, and it was mind blowing to see it in action. GitHub Copilot. This is a typical example. I literally want to print the size of my email image template. So this is the template I have here. I want to print the size so I know where to put the thumbnail exactly, right? And all I'm doing is typing print and it's it's literally saying like it's right there. Like you can see it, like it's it's suggesting that I print and it's suggesting what I want, right? Which is to print the size of the template, which is like, you know, if I look here, there's this documentation that shows you the size. So you know the width and the you know height. What's wild is I isn't it crazy? Like it's it's not like it's um autocomplete, right? It's not autocompleting it, it's basically using stuff from here, right? Which is open source, and then here to basically try to figure out what I'm going to do next and give like and like you know show me it's wow, it's crazy. Like the fact that it works is you know what I mean. When I was done coding, I deployed the code to Heroku. It's currently set up to generate and update every 15 minutes, and if everything goes well, then it should continue working. Fingers crossed. I wasn't quite sure how to end this video because unlike my other project videos, there isn't an app you can download or a website you can visit. The video itself is the project. As always, the code is available on GitHub. The link is down in the description below. If you enjoy videos like this, then consider subscribing. Thanks for watching all the way to the end, and I'll catch you on the next one. Until then, happy coding. Peace. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba.